Welcome, Heritage Church. I'm so glad that you've decided to join us in worship today. My name is Dee Dee, and I am blessed to be part of the worship team here at Heritage. It is so awesome to connect with you virtually and to be able to come into God's presence together. There's just something special about giving God the praise that He so deserves. During the lockdown, we didn't really have a choice of going to church. Our only option was watching services virtually. Now, I do have a heart of worship, and personally, I find strength, peace, and encouragement when I spend time worshiping. I have to confess, though, during the season that I wasn't able to attend services, I found myself being an observer of the worship and not really a participator. While the worship was on, I would maybe make breakfast, do dishes, clean the kitchen. I was busy. I was listening to the team, but I wasn't really entering into worship with them. Worship is a time that we exalt God and give Him the honor that He's due. He deserves our undivided attention. It's such a small offering on our part compared to what He has done for us. John 23, 24 says, It's who you are and the way you live that count before God. Your worship must engage your spirit in the pursuit of truth. That's the kind of people the Father is out looking for. Those who are simply and honestly themselves before Him in their worship. God is sheer being itself, spirit. Those who worship Him must do it out of their very being, their spirits, their true selves in adoration. So if you have been like me, and have fallen short in your worship, today I want to challenge you to join in with the worship team as they come to lead us into His presence. Don't be an observer, but be a true worshiper, worshiping out of your very being, in spirit, in truth, in complete and total adoration. Let's worship.
You're holy. You're seated on the throne. Nothing can stand against you. You're holy. You reign in all the earth. You reign in all the heavens. You're holy. You're seated on the throne. Nothing.
Cause grace rewrote my story I testify By Jesus Christ the righteous I'm justified This is my testimony Oh I'm alive This is my testimony From death to life Cause grace rewrote my story I'll testify By Jesus Christ the righteous I'm justified This is my testimony This is my testimony Dream. 
I just want to speak the name of Jesus Over every heart and every mind Cause I know there is peace within His presence I speak Jesus Hey, Heritage, it's been so good to get to worship with you and, and even open God's Word a little bit as we've kind of framed our time together today. I just love that song that we just sang, I Speak the Name of Jesus. That's such a powerful thing. In fact, in Scripture, God says that He has given all authority, all of His power to that very name, the person of Jesus, His Son. So when we declare those words that, that we're going to speak Jesus over the mountaintops, we're going to speak Jesus over our families and over every situation in our lives. We are giving that power that Jesus has given us over those situations, over those struggles, over those temptations. So in our time together today, I actually want that to be kind of a framing uh, a guide to our prayer time today, praying over a few specific buckets. And as we do that, I want to use breath prayer as we breathe in breathing in the name of Jesus and releasing when we breathe out the things that are holding us back, our stresses, whatever it may be. So let's begin. I invite you to take a big breath right now and declare the name of Jesus as we pray. Dear Jesus, we humbly come before you now as we just want to say, God, we surrender our families to you. God, the the struggles of this past year um, have been big for a lot of us. But God, we know that you have created us and instilled in us as parents and as families the ability to pursue you. God, and we know that it is in your presence that we are made whole, that we have everything that we need. So God, I pray that each of the families represented in this space right now, each of the families represented in our church body would cling to you, God, that they would run to you God, and ask for your wisdom and guidance that they would draw closer together in this season. God, and that you would help instill in them the anticipation of what is to come. Now I just want to take a minute to uh, create space to pray for our church family. As you know, there's some transition, some change happening within our church body, and, and I would just like to spend some time covering us in prayer. So let's just breathe in again, declaring the name of Jesus, and breathe out. God, I thank you for your provision. God, I thank you for the anticipation and excitement that you've instilled in our team, God, in our church body of what is to come. And truly, Jesus, through you and you alone, we can say that the best is yet to come. There's no other person, no other name that we could declare that under. God, I pray for your discernment, your wisdom upon our leadership in this season. God, and I pray for our church family that you just help us recognize and hold to the things that matter most. God, seeking the lost, uh, developing and growing in our own journeys with you. And God, would you just draw us closer together in this season? And finally, I just want to take another minute to breathe in and declare the name of Jesus and breathe out. I want you to keep doing that. And in this last moment of prayer, I just want to leave some silence for you to come before God and breathe in the name of Jesus, declaring his power and glory and breathing out, releasing anything that is not of Him. What is the one thing in your life? What's the big obstacle, the big giant in your way right now? I invite you now to breathe and pray and surrender that to God as we enter into His Word today. Hey Heritage, it is so awesome to be with you again today. I've got a question for you. It's very simple actually. 
when was the last time you felt incredibly refreshed? Like when was the last time your spirit and your soul and your body and your mind just felt rejuvenated, like incredibly rejuvenated. Like you felt like all your tanks, your emotional tank, your spiritual tank, your relational tank, your physical tank were all full. And you were ready to charge into life. You had plenty of reserves. You were ready to hit life with a veracity and a joy and a positivity that just kind of, I don't know, you, you, you were just ready to head out in life and do whatever you needed to do and, and take on whatever came at you. Chances are, it's probably been a while since you felt like that. And the reason why is because life throws so much at you, so much at me. There are so many things that come our way, so many things that just kind of take stuff out of our life. And if we take a few moments and examine why that is, if we actually are just a little bit critical or analytical, I don't mean critical in a bad way, I just mean if we analyze, why is it that so often I don't feel rejuvenated? I don't walk into my days with high expectations. Well, many times it's because we have said so many what I call mindless yeses. Mindless yeses. You know what a mindless yes is. That's when someone comes and says, hey, I'm moving next Thursday. Do you want to help me move? And the word yes comes out of our mouth before we're ever able to think about it. When someone asks us to do them a favor and the word yes comes out of our mouth before we think about it. When our kids come home and they say, mom, dad, I want to be part of this traveling team, this sporting team. Can I, can I, can I please be part of it? Can I join the team? And we say yes before we think about it. Sometimes our mindless yeses come with a sense of even anticipation or excitement. For instance, we get a job offer, a promotion perhaps, and it's going to mean a lot more travel. It's going to mean that we're going to be gone more from our families, but it's also going to mean more money. And so what begins to happen is, is we start justifying and say, well, you know, I, I'm going to be able to give a, a better quality of life to my family by saying yes. And so we don't really think about it cri critically. We don't really analyze whether or not that's the actually the wisest thing to do. No, we don't do that. We just give a mindless yes. Chances are you've done that. Maybe you've bought something. You found yourself out around and you've been kind of looking for something and you find whatever it is that you've been looking for, but it's a little bit more money than you were prepared to spend, or maybe it's actually not in the budget. And so you know, you're there in that moment and you, you kind of do a mindless yes. You just purchase it. And then you set yourself up for stress when you have to pay your bills. So often the thing that takes us away from refreshment and rejuvenation are mindless yeses. But here's what I know. What I know is that we don't have to live like that. Now, before you get mad at me and and. And perhaps, you know, you're saying, yes, Chris, I've said some, man, you know, some mindless yeses before. Before you get mad at me, can I say, there's never going to be a message that I'm ever going to preach at Heritage that I need to listen to more than this one. Because if I'm guilty of anything, I'm guilty of a lot of things, but if I'm guilty of anything, I continually say mindless yeses. I, I continually try and bite off more than I can chew. I continually try to do more than I think that more than anybody should be done. I, I think I can get more done than I really should be trying to get things done. In other words, I, I just run after way too many things at once. And what can happen over a period of time is that my soul gets to the point where it can be non-refreshed, <laughs> the opposite of rejuvenated. It can be tired. And if I'm not careful, I, I can end up with a a soul that's kind of shriveled up, a spirit that starts becoming, I don't know, maybe cynical. Now, I have to tell you that that's not at all the way that God designed us to live. Not at all. Not at all. He wants us to live with purpose and meaning and fulfillment. And that's why this message is so incredibly important. Because God wants us to be aware of the mindless yeses that we say 
And he wants to come alongside of us and help us to live so much more purposeful, so much more of a satisfying life. So as we continue in this message, I just want us to ask a couple of questions. And first is, why do we say yes? Why do we say these mindless yeses? Well, first of all, I think it, it feels good in the moment. I think there are some times when some of us have a pent up desire to do everything. And when someone comes and asks us, hey, do you want even something recreational? Like, do you want to go play golf or something? Maybe that's your thing. All of a sudden, yeah, let's go play golf. And then you realize, oh my goodness, that's, you know, if I'm playing 18 holes, which I do once a decade, <laughs> if I say yes, so that's a three hour commitment. Or we say, yes, I'll play on this softball team. And then we recognize, wow, that's going to take me away from my family X amount of hours every single week. But the reason we say yes is because it feels good in the moment. A friend asks us or someone asks us and it, it just feels good in the moment. And it's for people like us, because I can be in that camp as well, that the Holy Spirit wrote through a guy by the name of Solomon in the Old Testament of the Bible, these words. There is a path before each person that seems right, but it ends in death. <laughs> it's like, it seems right in the moment, but man, if you're not careful, you're going to end up paying for it in the long run. So I, I think the first reason we say a mindless yes is because it feels good in the moment. I think, I think the second reason is because we haven't really thought through our priorities. We haven't looked, again, at our schedules analytically, critically, in any way, shape, or form. We don't consider how saying yes to whatever it is that's coming our way is going to impact us spiritually, relationally with our family, how it's going to impact us financially, how it's going to impact us as far as our emotional health and our ability to really give ourselves to the things that we really do need to be giving ourselves to. See, we haven't really considered what does it mean to live an intentional life. I think the third reason why we say mindless yes is because we don't want to disappoint someone. That might be your number one reason. Ah, Chris, I just don't want to disappoint them. Maybe this person has done something nice for you in the past, or maybe you've kind of said, you know what, I, I, I kind of want to do some more recreational things, so maybe this is what I'm supposed to do. And so we don't want to disappoint the person. We don't want to disappoint our children. We don't want to disappoint another family member, a friend, a boss, a coworker, whoever. And so we say a mindless yes. You know, when, when it, our teenager asks us if they can be part of a traveling team, and we say, well, you know, I, I really want to support them and, and their athletics. And so we give a mindless yes. And we don't really consider, well, how is that really going to impact my child long term? How is that going to impact actually their spiritual walk? Are they going to have to say no to coming to church? Are they going to have to say no to going to youth group? Are they going to have to say no to things that actually we want to see developed in their life, and yet we don't want to disappoint our teenage kids. So we say a mindless yes. And finally, I think a lot of times that ultimately the reason we give a mindless yes is because we haven't considered that God actually has a plan for our life, that he actually does have a plan for us. Jesus said, and a guy by the name of John recorded it, the thief's purpose is to steal and kill and destroy. But my purpose is to give you life, a rich and satisfying life. You know, so many people miss out on that. And the reason they miss out on it is because they're not really tuned in to God's voice. A couple of weeks ago here at Heritage, we talked about the fact that often times, you know, uh, our spouse doesn't pick up the phone when we call them. And if we're not careful, we can begin to get irked. And you know, we laughed a little bit about that. Here, here's the thing. What I said in that message is, is that the, the phone calls I really don't want to miss are God's phone calls. When he's trying to whisper something into my spirit. But I'm going at such a pace. I'm doing life at such a speed. that I, I, And so many noises around me. And I'm coming up to the stoplight and I'm looking at TikTok or I'm looking at my email or I'm responding to her text, and I never actually sewed, slowed down to listen to what he wants to say to me. And because of that, I'm saying mindless yeses because I'm not in tune to what Holy Spirit wants to say to me. I've forgotten that he actually has an awesome plan for my life. 
that he actually has an awesome purpose that he wants to see fulfilled in and through me. And if we can tune in to what he's saying to us, oh, if we can tune into his phone calls, quote unquote, it will lead to so much more of a satisfying and fulfilling life for us. So that's why we say mindless yeses. Now I want to look at what does it mean to say a strategic no? What does it mean to say a strategic no? See, there are times in our lives when the wisest, healthiest, and best way that we can respond to things is to say no. Jesus did. Jesus gave us in a couple of incredible examples in the New Testament through his life of times when he gave a strategic no. Let me give you an example of one. Uh, I just love this. It's, a, it's an incredible story. Jesus has just left first century church, what they call a synagogue. And one of his disciples, a guy by the name of Peter, who had a brother by the name of Andrew, um, they, they lived close by. And so they invited Jesus over to their house. And this is what happens. As soon as they left the synagogue, they went with James and John to the home of Simon. That's Peter and Andrew. Now, Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever and they immediately told Jesus about her. So he went to her, took her hand, helped her up, and the fever left her and she began to wait on them. Immediately she was healed. That evening after sunset, word got out, right? The people brought to Jesus all the sick and the demon possessed. Like word got out, hey, Jesus is here and he's healing people. And the whole town gathered at the door and Jesus healed many who had various diseases. He also drove out many demons, but he would not let the demons speak because they knew who he was. Now, here's the thing. After that night, Peter, Andrew, Jim, or James, Jim and John, Pete, Andy, Jim and John, they all assumed that the next day, woo this is going to continue. Like, we started this healing crusade last night, and tomorrow morning, it's going to continue. Like, this is so cool. This is so much fun. But actually, Jesus was taking the Heavenly Father's phone call. Let me tell you what I mean. Look at the very next verse. Very early in the morning, the next morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went off to a solitary place where he prayed. Simon, that's Pete, and his companions went to look for him. And when they found him, they exclaimed, hey, Jesus, everyone's looking for you. Like, come back to town. We got to keep this healing thing up. And Jesus replied, actually, guys, no. Let's go somewhere else to the nearby villages so that I can preach there also. That is why I have come. So he traveled throughout Galilee, preaching in their synagogues and driving out demons. Now you have to understand, the disciples, when Jesus said that, they were blown out of their minds. They said, wait, what? Wait, wait, Jesus, are you kidding me? Like, we got something going on here. We got to keep this going. But Jesus wasn't interested in what the crowd around him wanted him to do. No, he wasn't interested in that at all. He was much more interested in living a purpose-filled life. And there are six key words in that passage that we just read together that just kind of sum up how he viewed life. And And they come out of Mark chapter one, verse 38. We just read it. He said, that is why I have come. See, Jesus had a purpose. Jesus was living his life from a purpose-filled center. He knew what he was here to do. He knew what his mission was, and he was living out his mission. And because of that, he wasn't going to say a mindless yes. He wasn't going to say yes to something that his heavenly father wasn't saying yes to. He was in tune. And by the way, that is not reserved just for Jesus The invitation is for you and I to stop, listen, and obey. To stop before we give a response, to listen to what the Holy Spirit is saying to us, and to obey what he's saying to us. That's our invitation. Years ago, oh my goodness, 20, 20, 21 years ago, a guy by the name of Pastor Rick Warren wrote a book called The Purpose Driven Life. Perhaps you read it all those years ago. If not, I'd encourage you to go to Amazon and and order a copy and read it. If you did read it all those years ago, I I encourage you to get off the bookshelf, get all the dust off, go back and just kind of skim it again and remind yourself 
of what it means to live a purpose-driven or purpose-centered life. Let me give you one more example from Jesus' life. He's just fed 5,000 people. Oh my goodness, like what an incredible miracle. And everybody knew it. Like they recognized that Jesus took a few loaves of bread, a couple of fishes, and he had multiplied them supernaturally, miraculously, to feed 5,000 men plus their wives, plus their kids. I don't know, 15, 16,000 people, whatever there was, a bunch of people got fed that day. And right after that happened, this is what the Bible says in John chapter 6. When the people saw him do this miraculous sign, they exclaimed, surely he's the prophet that we've been expecting. And when Jesus saw that they were ready to force him to become their king, he slipped away into the hills by himself. See, he wasn't going to say a mindless yes because he had a mission. And he stated that mission so incredibly clearly in Luke chapter 19, verse 10, when he said, the son of man has come to seek and save those who are lost. That was his mission. His mission was to help people come into a relationship with his heavenly father. He wasn't interested about becoming a king. He wasn't interested about doing other things other people might think he should do. He was interested in only doing what the Father wanted him to do. And when we live an intentional life, when we live from a purpose-filled center, oh my goodness, incredible things can happen. God can do even supernatural things through our life. It's fun to watch people who have a great intentionality. You know, like great sports figures, Michael Jordan, Jackie Robinson from years ago, Michael Phelps. It's fun to watch people that get intentional with their lives. And so they say no to things. When they're in the height of their athletic career, they, they say no to a lot of things because they have a purpose. They're going after a gold medal or they're going after an NBA championship or they're going after you know, a World Series or a Super Bowl ring, whatever it might be. Those are fun times to watch. But can I tell you something? The truth is you have greatness in you. I believe that with all my heart. And I'm not just, I, I, I'm not just trying to make you feel better. I mean that. You have greatness in you. How do I know that? Because you're made in the image of Almighty God. God made you in His image. And he has a unique and awesome and wonderful plan for your life. Look at what a guy by the name of David writes. This is what he says in the Old Testament, Psalm chapter 139. He's talking about himself and he recognizes what God has done. He says, you made all the delicate inner parts of my body and you knit me together in my mother's womb. Thank you for making me so wonderfully complex. Your workmanship is marvelous. How well I know it. Now just think about that for a moment. It's, it's interesting to read that or to listen to it. But get the picture here. It's almost as if this guy Dave is looking in the mirror and he says, wow, God, you've made something pretty cool here. And it's not that he's being egotistical or prideful or arrogant. I mean, we all get that, but no, that's not what he's being. What he's talking about is, wow, God, when I think that you actually took the time to put inside of me passion, put inside of me goals, put inside of me direction, put inside of me purpose, put inside of me the desire to see awesome things happen. Wow. Thank you, God. Thank you for loving me enough that you put something exciting in me. See, God has an incredibly unique plan for your life. He's given you the ability to do something better than 10,000 or 100,000 other people can do. I mean that. There are certain things that you can do infinitely better than other people around you can do. And the Holy Spirit, God himself, is just inviting you more and more into that. But in order to experience that, we're going to have to probably say no to other things so that we can experience all that God has for us. And there's this guy by the name of Paul in the New Testament of the Bible who talks about the specific kind of decisions that you have to make in order to experience all that God has for you. He writes about it in a book that he writes to some folks in a city called Philippi. And this is what he writes. He says, everything else is worthless when compared with the infinite value of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. For his sake, I have discarded everything else, counting it all as garbage so that I can gain Christ and become one with him. 
In other words, yeah, I understand there's a lot of other things in my life. There are all, a lot of other things I can give my life to. But you know what? It's all garbage. Like, when I compare it to being in a relationship with Jesus Christ and getting to know him better and being in tune with what he has for me and for my purpose that he has for my life, oh, man, nothing else compares. I can say no to this. I can say no to that. I, I don't have to say mindless yeses because I'm in tune with what God wants to do in my life. See, as we mentioned a few minutes ago, all that mattered to Jesus is that he wanted to do what the Heavenly Father wanted him to do. This blows my mind in that. In Colossians chapter 1 in the New Testament of the Bible, it tells us that Jesus is the one who spoke and everything came into existence. It says that. He's the one that spoke creation into being. It was his words. As a matter of fact, in John chapter 1, it says about Jesus that he is the word. He speaks the word. And in Colossians, again, chapter one, it says he spoke creation. So this one who has the power to speak into existence, all creation, said this, I tell you the truth, John chapter five, verse 19, I tell you the truth, the son can do nothing by himself. He does only what he sees the father doing. Whatever the father does, the son also does. See, the most extraordinary lives that I've ever witnessed, the most refreshed and rejuvenated people that I have ever known, the most joy-filled people I've ever met live with a sense of intentionality about them. It comes out of a dynamic relationship with Jesus Christ that they have. And they've spent time pursuing him. They've spent intentional time pursuing him. And out of that pursuit has come an extraordinary life. Two people immediately come to mind, although I could literally give you many, many, many more. Matter of fact, I will give you a few more in just a minute. But I've had the privilege of knowing a kind of an internationally known author by the name of Bob Goff. And uh, there's another guy in my life who I've known since I was a kid. His name is John Maxwell, kind of well-known in the leadership circles. I've known, I've known John most of my life. And I just have to tell you, what's interesting about those two guys is that they just live with an intentionality about themselves. And they live rejuvenated. They live refreshed. They, lived with a sense, they live with a sense of purpose and being. Oh, my goodness. It's awesome. But sometimes they've, they've had to say intentional no's and they've done it through the power of Holy Spirit. I'm gonna give you one last little example out of the Bible of that. Guy, this guy by the name of Paul, another guy by the name of Silas, were traveling together and the book of Acts tells us about their travels. This is what it says. Paul and Silas traveled through the area of Phrygia and Galatia because the Holy Spirit had prevented them from preaching the word in the province of Asia at that time. In other words, they were listening to what the Holy Spirit was saying, and he was telling them, I want you to go here and not here. There'll be a time to go over here, but right now, I want you to go here. Again, they were in tune with the Holy Spirit. I just tell you, it's not just about people that are known because they write books and stuff, where I see this intentionality play out. Oh my goodness. My incredible wife, I married way over my head, my wife Mary, gets up every morning and she spends time alone with Holy Spirit. She just time, spends time in God's word. She spends time praying. She spends time worshiping. She just enjoys the presence of Jesus. And out of that comes such a fulfilling life and such a powerful representation of who Jesus is. She says no to other things and she doesn't say mindless yeses and it fills her up. I would encourage you to Google the guy by the name of Scott Harrison, who started a, a, this great organization called Charity Water. Man, if Google him, watch a video or so of Scott. Scott, uh, amazing guy, happens to be a Christ follower. But Scott started this incredible ministry and this incredible just organization that's helping get water to the poorest of the poor around the world. But it came out of intentionality. It came out of an awakening that he had. He had a spiritual awakening where God got a hold of his heart and he let God get a hold of his heart. He was into drugs. He was into sex. He was into alcohol. He was into the whole nine yards. And God said, Scott, I've got something better for you. And Scott moved into that with intentionality. He left a life behind that was getting him nowhere. And he said yes to all that God had for him. And now he's literally changing lives around the globe. Christine Kane, 
incredible woman of God. You can Google Christine Kane and look up A21. Christine is helping so many kids around the world escape from sex trafficking. It's amazing what the A21 campaign is doing. I have a friend by the name of Joe Reed. Joe has suffered from mental illness. And in the last few years, when so many people have suffered with mental illness, Joe has taken that. And he said, you know what? I, I want to do my best to help other people understand that they don't have to succumb to mental illness. And they don't have to go down deep, dark wells of pain that, that lead them to thoughts, thoughts of suicide and, and ending their life. They don't have to go down that road. And he wrote a wonderful book called Broken Like Me. And you can check it out on Amazon. For a while, it was the most popular book on mental illness issues. Joe's a friend. And it's just been so much fun to watch Joe take intentionality, say, Holy Spirit, how can you use me? How can you use the things that I've been through? I'm gonna have to say no to some things. I'm gonna have to not say mindless yeses. And I'm gonna take the time to work my FedEx job, true story, to work my job at FedEx. But then at night, man, I'm gonna give myself to this manuscript. And now it's come out and it's blessing other people around the country. What are the things that God has placed inside of you? What, are this, what is the purpose that he wants to fill in and through you? So I wanna encourage you to just do a few things. Number one, start by just taking five or 10 minutes and think about what Holy Spirit is inviting you into. What unique and wonderful and at other times very ordinary things does he want to accomplish through your life? I'm begging you to pursue the dream that Holy Spirit has given you in the past or is, is rising up in you even now. Maybe, maybe consider what you believe he wants you to be known for in the long run. What does he want you to be known for as a friend, as a spouse, as a coworker? as a neighbor, as a parent. Take five or 10 minutes and just think through those things. Number two, what strategic knows will you need to say in order to live into all that God has for you? There are all kinds of, you might have to say some family knows. In other words, as a family, we're gonna say no to this or that opportunity because we want something better for our family. And other people, by the way, they won't understand it. Other people who wanna join that league, they're not gonna understand it. But if you live life with intentionality, in the long run, you'll be so glad you did. Sometimes we have to say couple no's. And what I mean by that is that we have to say no to other things so that we can have a date, so that we can enjoy our spouse. Third, maybe a strategic no is we have to set up a boundary. And these boundaries are gonna be different for all of us. We're, we're gonna have to say no to some things that other people can say yes to but it's a boundary that we set up and it's a healthy thing. And again, don't be surprised if other people don't get it. Don't be surprised if other people don't understand. Just like Jim and John, Pete and Andy didn't necessarily understand when Jesus said no, but Jesus understood that there was a bigger picture and he was going after that bigger picture. So thirdly, and I'm not trying to be mean or negative about this, but what no do you need to say first? What do, you say, what do you need to say no to first? You know, maybe you can just say intentionally, I'm gonna say no to this. And finally, what powerful yes do you need to make? What is a powerful yes that you need to make? Spending more time with Jesus, praying, spending time in his word, listening to his voice, maybe worshiping, time in creation. Maybe you need to begin to deploy the gifts. Maybe God's given you gifts and you've just never put them into practice. He's given you abilities to do great things and to bless other people. You've never actually activated those. What does it look like for you to activate them? Maybe you need to join some community of believers. You need to be part of a small group here at Heritage. We'd love for you to be part of that and actively get involved in community. Maybe your strategic guess is to begin to surround yourself with other Christ followers that can encourage you and spur you on to all that God has for you. Maybe you need a great group of friends around you that can encourage you to all that God has for you. And maybe, just maybe, maybe you can get involved in serving some other people that perhaps up to this point, you had a desire to serve, but you'd never taken the time to do it. Okay, final thing. If you're not in relationship with Jesus Christ, 
And can I just tell you, God uniquely and wonderfully made you. You're not a mistake. You're not an accident. You're here on purpose because God wants to do amazing things in you and through you. But that comes out of a phenomenally awesome, fulfilling relationship with him. And he wants to be in that relationship with you. So please reach out to us. Please connect with us, contact us here at Heritage. We wanna help you start that relationship with Jesus Christ. We wanna do that. Would you pray with me? So God, thank you so much that you love us enough, that you care for us enough, that you put purpose inside of us, you put intentionality inside of us, you put dreams inside of us. And when we're, when we're aligned with that purpose and those dreams and that intentionality, and when we're in a healthy and growing relationship with you, ah, oh, we don't get burnt out. No, there's rejuvenation. There's a wonderful pace. There's actually refreshment that comes. Jesus, you invite us in to a rhythm, even as Pastor Jeremiah was talking about last week, to a rhythm with you that allows us to experience everything that you created us to be. But to live with an intentionality and a purpose that causes us to actually feel refreshed. I pray that for my friends. I pray that you would help us to live into that. And if we're not in a relationship with you, I pray that we would make the decision to move into that relationship today. Thank you so much for your love for us. In Jesus' name. Spirit of the living God, Spirit of the living God, we only want to hear your voice, we're hanging on every word. Spirit of the living God, Spirit of the living God, we want to know you more and more, we're hanging Espíritu Santo de Dios, queremos conocerte más. Háblanos hoy, Señor. Espíritu Santo de Dios, Espíritu Santo de Dios, queremos escuchar tu voz. Háblanos hoy, Señor. Cause when you speak,
is the battle You see my victory When all I see is the mountain You see a mountain move And as I walk through the shadows Your love surrounds me There's nothing to fear now, for I am safe with you. So when I fight, I fight on my knees, with my hands lifted high. And oh God, the battle belongs to you, and every fear I lay at your feet, and I'll sing through the night. And oh God, the battle belongs to you And if you are for me, who can be against me? For Jesus, there's nothing impossible for you I'm so grateful for this invitation to be intentional about creating space for us to encounter and live in the invitations that Holy Spirit has for us. I, I know that as we choose to identify 
boundaries in our lives and identify even what grid we're using to chase after the things of God together, it will pay huge dividends. With that in mind, I want to invite you to participate in some of our group offerings that we have kicking off in just a couple of weeks. There's one in particular that's all about helping you discern and define your purpose and mission and values in your family context. I think it's going to be really great for helping you identify the boundaries and investments that your family has. Now, there are all kinds of other great group opportunities as well, from Bible studies to men's groups and women's groups. You can find all of those at heritageqc.com groups and in the Church Center app where you can register right away. I also am really excited about some opportunities we have coming our way as we gather in person in each of our Rock Island and Bettendorf campus locations. You'll see that Beginning in one week from today, we're stepping into live in-person teaching at both locations. That means that we're going to offer four distinct service opportunities at 9 o'clock at Rock Island, 9.30 at Bentendorf Campus, 11 o'clock in Rock Island, and 11.30 at our Bentendorf Campus. You can find that information and more, again, at heritageqc.com and in the Church Center app are so grateful for the way that you give radically and generously, how you help us pursue the things that God is doing in these cities as we try to live out his generous heart for others. So thanks for giving. If you wanna find out more about what your giving does or you wanna step into giving with us, you can again do that at heritageqc.com give or right there in the same church center app. We can't wait to see what God does as we continue to chase after him in this season. We hope to see you soon.